Number seven, Laura Buckingham. Former Marine Laura Buckingham was sentenced to 10 years of probation in the spring of 2019 for trying to orchestrate her ex-boyfriend's murder. Leading up to February of 2016, the Tennessee native had been embroiled in a bitter custody battle with her ex, Bradley Sutherland. 29-year-old Buckingham, a respected veteran with multiple tours of duty, hid her rage under a facade of domesticity through her work as a baker. She at one point was pictured on the cover of Southern Indiana Living, rolling dough with her toddler child in her lap. In February, Buckingham was living in Kingston with her boyfriend and fellow Marine, Joseph Chamblin. His time in the Corps had been marked by controversy as he'd been one of four Marines videotaped urinating on the corpses of Taliban fighters in Afghanistan in 2011. The 17-second clip went viral and caused outrage, resulting in Chamblin being court-martialed and demoted. Buckingham told the former sniper that she wanted Sutherland to go away and asked if he knew someone who could help. Chamblin wanted no part in the plot and after recording a few conversations with Buckingham on the matter, went to the authorities. The woman was then introduced to a potential hitman who was actually an agent of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations. Buckingham agreed to pay $30,000 for him to kill Sutherland and handed over part of the money. Prior to Buckingham's arrest on February the 24th, law enforcement in Louisville asked Sutherland to fake his death as part of the investigation. The man staged his own murder in a parking garage, an experience he later described as traumatic, comparing the entire ordeal to a Hollywood movie. Photos of the mock crime scene were sent to Buckingham, who then paid the undercover hitman the rest of the money. The woman, who'd once turned down a modeling career to join the Marines, pleaded guilty to solicitation for first-degree murder in December of 2018. As reflected by court records, Buckingham blamed post-traumatic stress disorder from her service in Iraq and Afghanistan for taking out the contract. Number 6. Lamore Whitehead On May the 22nd of 2022, in what was reported as an unprovoked attack, 25-year-old Andrew Abdullah gunned down Goldman Sachs employee Daniel Enriquez on the platform of a Manhattan-bound Q-train. Abdullah later turned up at a legal aid office in Tribeca, and his surrender was negotiated by Lamore Whitehead, founder of the Leaders of Tomorrow International Church. Whitehead showed up to the 5th Precinct in a luxury Rolls Royce and wearing a designer blazer. The high-profile case brought attention to the lavish lifestyle, dubious dealings and checkered past of the man whom some media outlets had nicknamed the Bling Bling Bishop. In the mid-2000s, he'd operated an extensive fraud and identity theft operation through which he'd taken out over $2 million in loans. The money was primarily used to purchase Range Rover cars. More than 50 victims from states including Tennessee, Georgia, and New York had had their identities stolen. Whitehead served five years at the Sing Sing Correctional Facility and was released in 2013. Within a year, he founded his ministry, registered as a for-profit business and marked by various shady practices. Whitehead claimed to have started a youth mentorship program with the collaboration of the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office and the NYPD. Both institutions refuted his claims, with the former sending him a cease and desist letter. While ostentatiously displaying his wealth in public, the bishop was sued in 2011 by parishioner Pauline Anderson, who claimed he'd stolen her life savings after promising to help her purchase a home. Whitehead at the time was running for Brooklyn Borough President and allegedly told Anderson he'd used her $90,000 as a donation towards his campaign. Leading up to 2022, the bishop stated he'd never solicited funds, even though his ministry's website had a donate button. For years, Whitehead had maintained a close relationship with New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Some suspected that it enabled the bishop to maintain the appearance of functionality for his church in lieu of a noticeable fall from grace. In July of 2022, Whitehead and his wife were robbed at gunpoint of roughly $1 million in jewelry during their church's services. Many were unsympathetic to the bishop's plight, particularly given his constant flaunting and the refocused attention on the Anderson suit. Number 5. 
Rebecca Warren. Close to midnight on December the 26th of 2019, Michigan officers initiated a traffic stop in Auburn Hills after they'd received multiple calls about a Jeep Cherokee moving erratically. The driver was a visibly intoxicated woman who, through her slurred speech and stumbling movements, revealed that she was a U.S. Senator. 48-year-old Michigan Representative Rebecca Warren failed her field sobriety test as she was unable to walk in a straight line or recite the alphabet. She refused to submit to a breathalyzer test, but a search warrant later led to her blood being withdrawn at a local hospital. Warren was revealed to be nearly three times over the limit. She was subsequently charged under Michigan's super drunk law, which imposed severe penalties for drivers found with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.17 or greater during the arrest, which was captured on dashcam video. Warren told officers that she was going to be the most famous arrest they ever made, that they were going to be on TV and called the incident career ending. The latter statement came to fruition. In February of the following year, Warren pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of misdemeanor driving while intoxicated. She was sentenced to one year of probation and 10 days of community service. The incident severely affected her political presence and she didn't seek re-election in 2020. Number 4. Dale Massad Port Ritchie Mayor Dale Massad resigned from his position on February the 22nd of 2019, the day after a police raid had gone wrong at his central Florida home. 68-year-old Massad was a known drug user. With a history of violence, his most recent arrest having occurred for a domestic incident. Massad's troubles with the law hadn't derailed the former laser surgeon's political career. However, he was then wanted by the authorities for practicing medicine without a license. Following revelations that he was still seeing patients at his home in spite of having given up his license in the early 1990s, a SWAT team thus went to his address on February the 21st to execute a search warrant. As later reported by Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko, Massad was known to own multiple guns. Given his pattern of aggressive and threatening behavior, the SWAT team involved in the raid knew, according to Noko, they were heading into a high-pressure situation. Massad fired two shots at the officers when they entered his house. Fortunately, no serious injuries were reported and the gun-toting mayor was taken into custody. Massad later tried to pursue Florida's stand-your-ground law, claiming he'd thought the officers were actually home intruders. He was charged with multiple counts of attempted first-degree murder of a law enforcement officer. Massad struck a plea deal and admitted aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, a weapons charge, resisting arrest with violence and practicing medicine without a license. The disgraced mayor was sentenced to three years in prison. Hey, it's Carl. Be sure to subscribe and leave your comments in the comments section below and maybe, just maybe, we'll get your video going next. Number 3. Ike Equiramedu On May the 5th of 2022, a homeless man in his early 20s went to London's Staines Police Station, claiming he'd been brought to England for his organs to be harvested. An investigation was launched and traced the allegations to high-ranking Nigerian politician Ike Equiramedu, aged 60, and his wife, Beatrice Nwanika. The former was a member of the Nigerian Senate, who'd served as its deputy president for three consecutive terms. The unnamed victim, a man from Lagos, had been taken to the UK on arrangements made by Dr. Obina Obita from Southwark, South London, specifically for his organs to be harvested. As reported by prosecutors, Ike and his wife had planned to have the man's kidney removed so that it could be given to their daughter. He refused to consent to the procedure after undergoing tests at the Royal Free Hospital in Hampstead, northwest London. The victim also revealed that his treatment by the Equiromedus following his refusal had been akin to slavery. He was eventually able to flee the house where he'd been kept and was homeless for three days. Before turning up at the police station, 
Ike and Beatrice were arrested at Heathrow Airport on June the 21st after arriving on a flight from Turkey. During their bail hearing in July, they denied any wrongdoing and that any exploitation had occurred. 50-year-old Obita was charged under the Modern Slavery Act for arranging or facilitating travel of another person with a view to exploitation and conspiring together with Ike to arrange or facilitate the travel of another person with a view to exploitation. The three defendants were set to go to trial for their alleged crimes, as of the latest updates available on the case. Number 2. Wisdom Awoot a young member of Grammy-nominated rapper The Baby's entourage was arrested for attempted murder in early June of 2021, following his involvement in a shooting in Ocean Drive, Miami Beach. 21-year-old Wisdom Awoot, a promising rapper signed to The Baby's billion-dollar baby entertainment label, was arrested and charged alongside Christopher Urena, aged 29. An argument had occurred between the latter and a group of men along the strip of Art Deco hotels and restaurants. It culminated with him brandishing a handgun and opening fire on them, with a woot following suit. Two people near the Prime 112 restaurant were struck by stray bullets. Both of the unnamed victims were taken to the Jackson Memorial Hospital, where one was treated and sent home while the other remained in critical condition and was reported as paralyzed. The baby was held for questioning in the shooting's aftermath, but was later released while Awoot and Urena were kept behind bars, awaiting the legal proceedings associated with the case. Number 1. Ron Jeremy Ronald Jeremy Hyatt, professionally known as Ron Jeremy, was at one point ranked by Adult Video News as the number one adult film star of all time and broke the record for most appearances with over 2,000 starring roles. Jeremy was also highly protected by the industry and took advantage of his position to assault countless women. While prevalent in the adult performer community, his abusive behavior went largely undetected in the mainstream media. His popularity kept growing, amassing millions of fans through his goofy comedic persona, and he raked in millions of dollars through various ventures backed by his position as the king of adult entertainment. Then in 2017, a YouTube video posted by webcam model Ginger Banks detailed the many accusations against Jeremy. It triggered an investigation by the LA Times and before long, the authorities followed suit. On August the 25th of 2021, Jeremy was indicted on a total of 30 counts of assault against 21 women. Fellow actress Ginger Lynn was among his first alleged victims. She and Jeremy were at a Hawaiian hotel in 1983 while they were filming a movie together. Lynn was at the time engaged to a co-star in celebrating her 21st birthday on the beach. When she went to change in a bathroom, Jeremy followed her inside and forced himself upon her. Adding to her ordeal the following day, Lynn had to shoot a scene with her abuser. In 2000, Jeremy assaulted British adult actress Leanne Young in a crowded nightclub with multiple witnesses. The attitude that they'd had towards the incident reflected how untouchable Jeremy was at the time when someone told Young, that's just what Ron does. As Jeremy's fame grew, so did the brazenness of his attacks, with some openly occurring at fan conventions or various bars and nightclubs, predominantly in West Hollywood. His victims, many of whom were in the adult industry, were hesitant to speak out because of Jeremy's power and influence, while also fearing that they wouldn't be believed given their profession. The disgraced performer fully denied the accusations, claiming his victims had buyer's remorse. As of the latest updates on the case, the trial against 69-year-old Jeremy was suspended in March of 2022, pending a mental health evaluation as he'd become incoherent in court and didn't recognize his attorney. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be banned from every social media platform or from every food delivery service? Let us know in the comments section below.